I'm going to talk about signal transduction pathways um, or a typical signal transduction pathway where protein kinases and protein phosphatases uh, change the con change conformations and thus the activities based on their, their catalytic actions um, and how, what proteins they modify and how that completely changes the type of reaction or reaction pathway that goes on. So if I'm going to draw, let's say, a little cell membrane up here. So let's pretend that the signal has already been placed in the cell and this is the inside of the cell right here and this is the outside. So a signal has already gone through this integral protein here and been active and this has somehow activated this a uh, protein kinase. Let's do it in a different color. This protein kinase. So I'm going to depict active kinases as uh, kind of square rectangles and inactive ones as circles. So if we look right to the left of this, let's do a circle. So this is an inactive protein kinase 2. So let's actually label these as we go. I'm just going to label them like uh, P a1, so just protein kinase 1, um, and this is the active one. And then on this one, I'm going to label this PK2, because it's not active yet, so there's no A there. But if this comes down and activates it by adding a phosphate group to it, because that is what kinases do, we are going to have PKA2. Two. So this is your little phosphate group that's added based on the kinase activity of protein kinase 1. So you can see here that this is also a reversible reaction, so the phosphate group can be taken away by a phosphatase. So I'm going to write that up here just to clarify. Kinase add a phosphate and phosphatase. remove phosphates. Okay, so I just want that to be clear because these are really important for the uh, signaling transduction pathways that we're going to talk about. So this active protein kinase 2, let's say it comes down here and there is an inactive protein kinase 3 sitting right here which can be phosphorylated to activate this, to uh, be turned into protein kinase PKA3, and we're going to put the phosphate group right there. And once again, this is reversible because a phosphatase could come and remove this phosphate group, which would return this protein kinase to its inactive conformation. So, a conformational change, just think about it some, like something like uh, if you are sitting on a couch and someone comes and tickles your foot, you're going to jump around and change the conformation that you're in, right? So that's kind of like a protein uh, kinase. It'll get a phosphate group added to it, and it's like its foot got tickled, and it'll completely change its conformation. So it'll be a different shape, so like going from a circle to a rectangle in these drawings. Obviously, it's a little more scientific than that, but for the simplicity of this video, we're going to pretend that that's all it is. Um, so protein kinase 3, let's pretend it goes down, and there is this transcription factor transcription sitting right here and it is inactive so this protein kinase 3 adds a phosphate group to it Ooh. so now it is active right here once again this is reversible so a transcription factor has the ability to, uh, it, 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 like if you activate a transcription factor, it'll increase its affinity for a site on the DNA. So this active, we'll put this in another color. This one will come, let's just pretend it travels uh, over here to the DNA. And the DNA is sitting like this, like that, and 
like that. And let's pretend that the site, that this transcription factor, wants to transcribe, so turn into mRNA to make a protein or something like that. Um, the site that it wants to transcribe is right here. And now that it's been activated, it's by adding a phosphate group to it by this protein kinase 3, it will be able to bind to this site with more affinity. So we will go back to orange to show the color of this. It will come in here and it will bind to its site to increase the transcription of this DNA. And then you will have a, uh, it, when it binds to this DNA, it will affect the transcription of the gene that is encoded from this region of the DNA. So once again, each one of these pathways is reversed by a phosphatase. So after protein kinase uh, one activates protein kinase two, it will be inactivated by a phosphatase. So we can draw that. This one will come and it'll be turned into just PK1. And same thing with protein kinase 2. After it activates protein kinase 3, it'll be inactivated and it'll just wait around to be activated again. That's what these enzymes do. They just wait around until someone adds a phosphate group to it and then it goes, okay, I have a job to do. It goes and finds the protein that it needs to activate. It does so and this pathway just continues on and on. And every single step of this really needs to happen in order for certain transcription factors to be activated or certain cellular responses to happen. So if there's mutations in any of the proteins involved, which would be due to a transcription error, translation error, either one, um, this whole pathway can actually be disrupted, which could lead to detrimental effects inside the cell and then in the organism as well. So you can see how important these different pathways are, and we're going to get a little bit uh, into more detail of these uh, different pathways and specific protein kinases that are and phosphatases that are used in these pathways in the next videos.